Good morning, Mrs. Cashier. Please, I have some items purchased from you earlier for return. Good morning to you. Do you have the customer's right of sales return? If you do not, please let us see the width of the back of your neck and etikala la la minhina. Yes, I have the right to return. It is mentioned on the receipt that the customer can return purchases from you within 14 days from the date of purchase. May I know what is the reason of return of merchandise? Is it because of the product defects or because of other causes of your dissatisfaction? First of all, I have the right to return. Secondly, I requested the return within the allowable period. Thirdly, return is for a valid reason, which is the product defects. Therefore, you need to apply the rules in practice, or otherwise I will use your body as a sweeper to clear the dirty floor of this place. More and above, I closely know a recognized figure in consumer protection organization. Understood. Let me call my manager and know exactly what are the rules in this regard. Please do. My manager said that when right to return merchandise exists, our entity may recognize revenue from a sale of goods at the time of sale only if the amount of future returns can be reliably estimated. A provision must be made for the return of merchandise because of product defects, customer dissatisfaction, etc. Although it is not a part of my interests as a customer, it appears to be interesting to know how entities treat return of merchandise in their books of account. Are there any additions from the manager in this regard? Yes. He added that in order to be consistent with the matching principle, which is recognizing revenues and related expenses in the same accounting period, the revenue from sale of goods and the expense for estimated sales returns must be recognized on the same date. Accordingly, an allowance for sales returns should be established. Could you please give me an example if you have enough time? I have time as long as no other customer is lined up. The example is as follows. Assume that a company has $500,000 of sales in July, its first month of operations. Management estimates total returns to be 1% of sales. How this transaction is recorded? I mean what are the journal entries that should be made during July for this sales transaction? Actually, two journal entries are to be made. The first entry is to recognize the sales where the account's receivable account is debited for $500,000 and the sales account is credited for $500,000. The second entry is to recognize the associated allowance of sales returns, where the sales returns account, contra revenue account, is debited for $5,000, being the 1% of July sales, and the allowance for sales returns account, contra asset account, is credited for $5,000. The last question, how does revenue appear in the income statement and how accounts receivable appear in the balance sheet immediately after this transaction? In the income statement, sales appear in gross at $500,000 and sales return of $5,000 are subtracted, and net sales are shown at $495,000. In the balance sheet, accounts receivable appear in gross at $500,000 and allowance for sales return of $5,000 is subtracted, and net accounts receivable are shown at $495,000.